what is your best source of uh, leads? Like, where do you get most of your leads for your properties? And by far, the number one response is through referrals. By far, it's not even close. So when you start thinking about referrals, and we'll talk about a, a bunch of different ways that you can go and find properties, depending on which strategy you want to use. But start with family and friends, right? Like a lot of my students, they've got family that might have a vacation house in Florida or up in the mountains somewhere. I'm like, start with them. That's the easy sell because they already know, like, and trust you. Explain to them how you're getting educated, explain all the benefits, show them the data on that market, why this makes sense for them, if it does. And just start with your family and friends. Then it's looking out to, all right, what real estate agents do I know? What lenders have I used in the past? What attorneys? What is What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What is up, E? Happy New Year, brother. I am so grateful that we are both responsible and neither one of us is hangover because it is January 1st right now, and we're both here rocking. And we look quite good, I must say. I didn't get a lot of sleep, but I feel great. Um, super grateful, brother. It's always that atmosphere in the air of like opportunity and possibilities um which i mean i feel all the time but it's more evident at the beginning of the year right there's kind of like that excitement of what we're going to create who we're going to be in 2021 um i am doing a round of 75 hard um again so i'm really looking forward to really leveling up my my health a little bit more um i've done a lot of work in 2020 for it, but my body's been feeling great. So I'm really going to push it um, in this next 75 days. Um, so if you are listening, you're thinking about it, you should join. Let me know. Reach out to me. Let me know. Hey, I heard you on the podcast. I'm also doing 75 hard because um, guys, discipline equals freedom, right? Discipline with your body equals freedom in your life and really everywhere else. So super, super stoked. Um, but yeah, man. I love that. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, this time of year, I've, I'm much more aware of it now, but there's always this tendency like, you know, I'm working out, I'm going on a lot of runs, doing some hikes and stuff in the summer and the fall. And then as it gets colder here in New England, like it kind of trails off and the gyms are closed around here. So, you know, we're finishing the basement, but just ordered a, a Peloton and that new, uh, that new tonal workout machine. So I'm pretty mm. stoked to start using those, but everything's so back ordered. So I might honestly buy a used Peloton and then resell it until my new one gets here. <laughs> so yeah. I can just start getting workouts in. Cause I'm definitely feeling just like, I mean, you know, man, like when you're working out consistently, you're just in a good state. Like you, you just, if you're not, you're just kind of feeling sluggish. Right? Yeah. And it just kind of opens you up. Yeah. It's the warrior side of our body. And that's the way that I, I go to it. Like is the realization that the way we evolved for hundreds of thousands of years was being really, really active. And then over time we become less active, but that is still inside of you. Right. So when I do the 75 hard, a lot of people were like, isn't that too much working out, but really what happens and what's amazing is like, the more you do it, the more your body gets used to it. So literally I did my first 75 hard, um, at the end of May. And I kept up the routine, which is two workouts a day, pretty much seven days a week ever since. Right. So that becomes your new normal, um, which kind of segues us perfectly into kind of part of the, what we want to talk about. Um, yeah, absolutely. So. So what. What we want to talk about today, because one of the questions we get asked constantly is where do I find properties to add to my portfolio, right? Whether you're buying properties, whether you're master leasing properties, or whether you're co-hosting properties, that's probably the biggest question that I get asked from people. So today we want to dedicate the podcast to talking about that um, because there's a lot of ways to find deals. But the first thing that you need to do 
in order to do that, especially if this is something new for you, is you got to start shifting your identity to become a short-term rental investor, right? And I think we've talked about this a couple of times on the show, right? But when I got started in this, I was working full-time as a CPA. And anytime I was out at networking events or at mastermind meetups or whatever, people would ask me what you do. And automatically I would say, oh, I'm a CPA. And E called me out on this a ton at the beginning. He was like, why are you still telling people you're a CPA? And I'm like, it's a good point. So I had to consciously override that because that was my identity at the time. Like I was an accountant that was in my identity. But when I started consciously shifting that, when somebody asked me what you do, I said, oh, I'm a short-term rental investor. And then they're like, oh, like, what does that mean? You know, because most people are familiar with the term Airbnb, but maybe they haven't heard or they're not as familiar with short-term rental and it just sparks the conversation. But the more you do that, the more it's going to shift your identity, the more you're going to see yourself as a real estate investor, as a short-term rental investor, and it's going to pull you into more conversations and pull you into more action. So the first step is to literally shift your identity. And there's, you know, we can kick around a few books. If you guys didn't check out the podcast last week, um, we put to, we dropped a bunch of different nuggets in there. And then we put together a little free PDF you guys can download. You go to strsecrets.com 2021. We've got a whole bunch of book recommendations in there, some different uh, planner recommendations in there, and then just a format for you to map out your five-year vision uh, and your goals for the upcoming year. So check that out, strsecrets.com slash 2021. Uh, totally free. Just throw in your name, email, let us know where you want to send it, and you'll get it over there. So um, check that out for the book recommendations. And then as far as finding properties, right? E, you want to you take start this off and then we'll go back and forth? Yeah. I mean, so to me, obviously it all depends where your areas of uh, expertise are, right? So for example, if you're already somewhat involved in real estate, you already have a network of people around you. So let's say you're a long-term investor and you already have all your subcontractors, probably your lowest hanging fruit could be right there, right? Reach out to the people you know, reach out to people that already work with you and just let them know, hey, I'm looking for a short-term rental property. Have you ever seen one? Have you ever worked on one? Um, we were on Clubhouse yesterday. If you haven't used it, download it. We go on there live all the time. And there you can actually reach us and ask us live questions. But we had um, a speaker on there with us yesterday. And he asked his cleaning lady, whatever or not, she knew anybody else that was doing vacation rentals. And just like that, she's like, yeah. And he's like, well, do you know anybody that could use more money? And she's like, yeah. And guys, one conversation, he has a call, I think it's this week, with like- 15 properties. 15 so she, properties. he asked her, he was like, hey, are you, how many vacation rentals are you cleaning? And she said, oh, 50. And he was like, wow. And he was like, are any of the owners, you know, if they're using third-party managers, are they happy with the managers? Or is anybody self-managing that doesn't want to do it anymore? And just that, like he said, that one conversation, she's like, yeah, I think we got about 15 of them. So he just added potentially 15 units to his portfolio. You know, he's doing the co-host model where he's essentially managing other people's properties. But I mean, 15 units in one conversation. Yeah. And guys, he, he, what he has now, he has what? One, one, one to five, right? He started with one. He has four more. So yeah. just like that, he is bought a single family, crushed it, and then he bought yeah. a four family, and he's under contract on another single family. Yeah, and now we, you know, he's so he's going to go from six to tw uh, twenty one, right? Yeah, if he gets all these deals. So think about it. His life it's it's completely changed, and it's all through the one conversation, and in the people that you already have in your life, right? And I think every time people want to do new things, you think is the most complicated things instead. A lot of the times there is low hanging fruit everywhere, right? 100%, 100%. So, and even like guys, networking events, right? I mean, <laughs> they're not happening as often, but they're starting to kind of come back up. Go to ones that are not your profession, right? If you go to some of them that you already go to a lot, like come to a real estate one, right? And just come there and don't tell people, there's two things with rewriting your identity, right? You got to remove the words, I'm trying to be a real estate investor. Yeah. Eliminate the word try, period. It just, it just can be there. Even if it's the, like, it's January 1st, you decided now, 
I'm going to become a real estate investor this year. That's who you are. Show up to meetings and don't say try. Don't say I would like, right? It's really understanding that like the power of the language that you use when describing yourself. Because every time that I say, I'm going to try to do this, that means there's part of me in my subconscious that is not confident that it's actually going to happen. Yeah. 100%. So how are you going to win? If you already are, you know, <laughs> you're restarting the journey saying, giving yourself a way out. Yes. Yeah. Commit. Commit, right? Yeah. A lot of people setting a lot of health goals like we were talking about. Oh, I'm trying to lose 15 pounds. No, just I'm going to lose 15 pounds by June 30th or by April 1st or whatever. Like use that definitive language. I am going to, I am losing 15 pounds by such and such a date. Just by having that little shift in your vocabulary, it changes your entire energy and it commits yeah. you to the actual decision. But what we don't, what you guys don't see is we send out a questionnaire to all the guests that we have on the podcast. <clears throat> and one of the questions that we ask we tend to not cover every single one because we ask a lot of questions in there. But one of the questions that we ask is, what is your best source of uh, leads? Like, where do you get most of your leads for your properties? And by far, the number one response is through referrals. By far. It's not even close. So when you start thinking about referrals, and we'll talk about a, a bunch of different ways that you can go and find properties depending on which strategy you want to use. But start with family and friends right? Like a lot of my students, they've got family that might have a vacation house in Florida or up in the mountains somewhere. I'm like, start with them. That's the easy sell because they already know, like, and trust you. Explain to them how you're getting educated, explain all the benefits, show them the data on that market, why this makes sense for them, if it does. And just start with your family and friends. Then it's looking out to, all right, what real estate agents do I know? What lenders have I used in the past? What attorneys, what real estate attorneys have I used? What title companies have I used? Anybody that has influence over potential homeowners, right? It's, it's so simple, but if you, can, if you can develop a relationship with one of them, that is an endless referral source for you instead of doing a shotgun approach and trying to find every single person out there that's buying or owning a short-term rental property mm -hmm. or a potential short-term rental property. So start with your family and friends, then go through the real estate network, then go through the business network, then go through the real estate investor networks through different meetups and things like that. Start with those first. And then we can talk about some other online ways that you can find properties. But by far, that is how we grew our portfolio, right? Like straight up, just through lead generation and referrals that way. I did get a couple early on through online and I was hosting a meetup and some different things. But when you position yourself as the expert in your space and you're confident and you've changed your identity, and you build those relationships with those service providers, you can grow a portfolio very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the best way is that you have all these people that love and trust you. They're also out there talking and touching people and you have no idea who, who they're going to meet. Right. So I think another thing that is very important is as you start talking to your friends and family, bring some of the way that we do with sales, right? You got to have this conversation often. So this got to become something that people associate with who you are, right? And that's what really changed with Mike when he went from CPA to the Airbnb guy. It just happened. It seemed to happen overnight, but it literally, you become associated with real estate. My Instagram is real estate. So people expect now, People tell me all the time, I expect every time I go to your Instagram, to your Instagram story, that I'll see a house. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's what I do. Every time you see what I'm doing, what is he doing? There is a house involved. Yeah. That's 100%. the end of it. And then you become that person. So and then that is superpower that you can develop. That would be hugely beneficial in this business is become a connector. And becoming a connector is the easiest way for you to one, take care of people that already take care of you, but to also to reach out and expand your network in a way that brings value, right? So if you can expand your network, become a connector, and then people are always going to be talking about you, 
because you're like, oh my God, this guy is so great. Who recommended to you this guy? Oh, and you know what this guy does is very interesting. He's a professional short-term rental host. Oh, what is that? Oh, you should talk to him. Yeah. And is a snow, is a snowball? Like yeah, a snowball, snowball effect. effect. I'll just keep rolling. One hundred percent. And the, that's a good point that you touched on too. Like the social media profiles. Like, if you're serious about growing, you know, this business, whether full time or on the side, stop using social media to just post pictures of your kids and your cats. Like, if you look at, I have like a personal one, but I have like a business one, and my Instagram is all business. My Facebook business page is all business. And then I do a blend on my personal page, but I'm always sprinkling in real estate, short-term rentals, uh, workshops I host, things like that. So leverage that. That's like free advertising through your network. And the more people see it, the easier it's going to be. Mm. And real quick on E's point about the networking and being the connector. If you're an introvert like me, and I know a lot of people don't believe that I'm an introvert, but I'm telling you, I could talk on this microphone all day long, but you put me in a room of a thousand people, I get uncomfortable. So I have to push myself outside of my comfort zone. So one of the things like I did last year, I went to a, a conference of 5,000 people by myself. I didn't know anybody there. And I forced myself to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with somebody new every single day. And it was massively uncomfortable for me, but it was so beneficial because it pushed me to grow. And I made some great relationships through that conference that if propelled me forward in my business, but more so it gave me the confidence to know that like when I make a decision, even if I'm comfortable, I'm uncomfortable, I will follow through no matter what. And mm -hmm. the more you can test yourself with that, even doing like the 75 hard, like he was talking about the point. Yes, you'll get in better shape, but the real point is to prove to yourself that you can push yourself past what you're comfortable with. Yeah. hundred percent. And that's really the way I'm doing it. Right. It's just, it's just, you give yourself a proof of concept, right? And also, I love that you brought up, because I was super proud of you when you went to that event and you met some amazing people. But this is something that like one of my mentors, Dan Grieb, always kind of talked to me about. It, it was like, what you fear the most and the thing that you're most embarrassed about is the people, is the thing that most people will have in common with you, right? Because we're all the same people. We all have fear. We all don't like going to a big room with people we don't know and try to make conversation. But just do it because at the end of the day, how do you feel when somebody random at an event comes in into your conversation? You're not thinking in your head, oh, this guy. You include them. So you just got to get through it because we all understand. We're all trying to be social. We're all at this networking event because we all raise our hand that we're trying to network. So don't show up to the networking event and then no show up because you're shy. It's going to be a little bit awkward at first and you got to do what you got to do. But at the end of the day, everybody is there for the same thing. Everybody's there to look to connect with people. So you just got to get out of your own way. And then every conversation gets a little bit easier. I'm sure that by the end of the weekend, it was a lot easier for Mike to ask somebody to sit at their, at their table than it was on day one. A hundred percent. Sorry, I just didn't realize I muted myself. A hundred percent, right? So kind of putting the bow on this and tying a lot of these different things together. Focus on shifting your identity. Start optimizing your social media profiles. Start reaching out through your network and telling people, you know, what you're doing, not what you're trying to do, what you're doing this year, how you're getting educated, what markets, what markets you're focusing on, what types of properties you're looking for and go through and map out. All right. Who are the best agents in my market? Who are the top lenders? Who do I have relationships with? Title companies, attorneys, insurance brokers. Uh, short-term rental cleaners, handymen that might be working, you know, on different maintenance projects at different properties and any local investors that you might know, or any investors in the markets that you might want to be in and just start mapping those out. All right. Come up with those first. That'll be the, the path of least resistance. Then you can do some cold outreach, go on sites like Zillow, hot pads, Facebook marketplace, and look for properties that are either for sale or for rent and just reach out to people. 
you know, depending on which strategy you want to use, there's all sorts of different scripts that you can come up with to show the benefits of them working with you and the different upside, or maybe getting somebody to sell or finance a property to you, depending on their situation. You know, we, we don't want to get into all the different acquisition strategies today, but we just want to show you different ways that you can go out and find properties yeah. because there's properties everywhere and the opportunities are endless. You just have to take a step back and think who, who has the real estate that I need? It's, it's a very simple question, but you just need to sit back and map that out. Yeah. And where are these people hanging out? All right. Like, how do I get in those rooms? And I think one of the big conversations every time that I, I, I look at how I'm going to grow, it's really like, what room should I be in? What people should I be surrounding myself with? Right. And also, guys, as you choose a strategy as to how you're going to find leads, give yourself daily, daily goals. Because that like, you know, if you want to reach out to the real estate agents, make yourself a list. And then every day you reach out to one or two real estate agents and one or two real estate agents. So your goal is to just, is to just understand what the path is. And then once you decide what your path is, you have to put the actions in place and then you got to check back. So I thought this was going to be a great source of deal for me. And we're going to find properties. I've done it now for two or three weeks consistently every day. Now reassess. Have you found any leads from it? No. Okay. Now move on to the next person, to the next thing on your list. Because you'll naturally find your own, your own niche. Mm -hmm. Because that, there's going to be the people, you'll find the people that you talk to and that understand you and that vibe with you because they're like you. But that takes some time. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So we, uh, we mentioned it earlier, but you guys should definitely check out Clubhouse. That app is amazing. Like we've been going on that pretty hard the last few days. And I was on, I was on a panel the other night talking with a bunch of other short-term rental investors from all over the place. And uh, Cody Sperber, the clever investor hopped in, which was really cool to get to hang out and talk with him. And this question was brought up of like, where should I invest? And he was like, he's like, we need to stop thinking about where and just think about what type of lifestyle are you trying to create? Like, do you want 50 properties? Like, and if you do like ask yourself why, or do you just want three of them that make five grand a month a piece and you can live a good lifestyle and retire and do whatever you want to do in some cool locations. He's like, focus more on like, what are you actually trying to build? Stop mm -hmm. focusing on, all right, where how many units do I need to have? And where can I make the most money? Like think about designing the business that you would actually enjoy doing mm. and then reverse engineer that. And it was such a golden nugget. Like he literally came in for like 15 minutes, just dropped some gems and was like, I'm out. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. man, like way to come in and add value. But, but you know, that's, that's what, and it's funny that as you were saying this, this kind of analogy came to my mind, but it's the difference between the people digging for gold and the people selling the shovels, right? The reason why people don't find gold most of the time is because they hear one guy yell up the stream and they run up the stream. And then they hear another guy and they run up the stream. Whereas the guy, he's why. He's like, I'm just going to sell supplies. This is all I'm doing. I don't care about the gold. I'm going to sell supplies. Well, he's selling a shit, shit ton of supplies. And then the people that don't know their why, they're just trying to make it out or whatever it is. Yeah. Keep running from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. And nothing works because they're just not connected to their why. Yeah. 100%. You know? I know when I initially started, I was like, I want to have like 200 units. And then as I reflected and I started drilling down into the why, you know, I was going to cap it at 20 because we were making good money. Like everything was comfortable. And then, uh, Sandra, who we both mm -hmm. know, she, she pushed me to keep going, not be, not for the money, just because I have some students that are really looking to scale it up. And she's like, you owe it to them to level your game up and keep growing and growing and growing, which is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, it goes back to the why of like, why am I adding more units? 
it's so that I can continue adding more value to the community. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the only reason at this, at this point. Yeah. hundred percent. Also because guys, when you realize really, and, and this is why last week's episode and this episode are super important at the beginning of the year is, is when you realize what you need really, it's a lot less than what you think. Right. Yeah. And, and we have, we used to play around with like, what's your freedom number. Right. And really understanding if you can imagine this wildlife where you have and do everything that you want, how much does that cost? And when you put pen to paper, it's a lot less. So really having this super clear as you going into the new year, super clear idea of what and why, and then everything else will fall into place. Because then 100%. you know, you know, 100%. And, and the biggest part is, you know what you don't want. Cause it's funny big- though. I feel like most people know what they don't want, but they have no clue of what they actually do want. Yeah. No, but I, what, what I mean is also, you know, once you have a clear what and want and a clear why it's a lot easier for you to say no to the things that you don't want. hundred percent. Right. hundred percent. Cause we, you and I both are, are people that now are approached by a property. And if the property doesn't feel right or doesn't sit right with who we are and what our brand is, I have no problem saying no. Oh yeah. And my why is because it doesn't fit in my brand one. And I can't, that means that I can add the value that I want to add to it. So I am not the best person for you. And it's not even anything else. It just doesn't fit with our what or our why. We appreciate the opportunity. We are not the people for you. Yeah. And really, I know that that gets super hard, guys, especially if you listen, especially at the beginning, right? When you're kind of feeling that you want to want to do it. But most of the time, <laughs> and if you want to try it on your own skin, please go ahead and do so. But most of the time when your gut says no at the beginning and you make it happen, that's going to be the 80-20 principle. It's going to be 20% of your business that cause you 80% of your headaches. And if you had done <laughs> what we're talking about and you know your what and want and your why, you wouldn't have got the same into the situation at all. Yep. Yep. It's one of the best pieces of advice I've ever got to was from Matty A, who we've had on the show, mm-hmm. because I get a lot of people, you know, asking to join the mastermind or be mentored by me and, and all these amazing opportunities. And I always ask them, you know, why do you want to do this? And I ask them, what are you doing now? And it's so easy to get caught up in the shiny object syndrome, like he was talking about. And they're, they're dabbling in wholesaling and fix and flips and maybe looking at multifamily and they want to add short-term rentals on top of it. And I, the advice that Maddie gave me years ago, he said, pick one lane and absolutely crush it. And you do not move on to the next one until you've automated it, mastered it and delegated it down. Mm -hmm. And once I started doing that, that's when things started taking off because I was laser focused on one thing. So if you, if you are sold on short-term rentals, like if you want this to be your thing, you like your side hustle, which you can turn into your full-time gig and automate it and scale it, then just focus on this. Don't try and do this and six other side hustles because you're not going to make progress in any of them. And you're Mm -hmm. just going to be like wading water instead of actually swimming in the direction that you want. So pick, pick one thing to focus on. If it's this awesome, if it's something else, that's fine. But like fix your focus on a primary goal and go an inch wide and a mile deep Mm -hmm. until you've mastered it and delegated it to somebody else and then move on to the next thing. Yeah. And get rid of everything else. Yeah. Right. I remember my, I've been a personal development junkie for a long time. And I remember back in 2017, I did all of 2017. I listened to a podcast a day, maybe two. And I had a huge, um, thing of notes on my phone, all the takeaways from all the podcasts. And I was listening to anything from bigger pockets to Tim Ferriss. And my coach at the time was like, you need to stop. You're consuming too much content and it's of too many different things. That's why you always feel all over the place. 
because you just get ideas all the time. If like Mike said, short-term rental is the way for you and you've decided, and if you're on episode 32 now, you've listened to enough of this that you know that this is what you want to do. You got to throw out all the junk food that you have in your house. So if you listen to podcasts that are not about short-term rentals, if you read books that are not about short-term rentals, if you're doing things that are not about short-term rentals, put all this shit in a box for the next six months. Yeah. Like give us, give yourself this six months of really going 75 hard, right? So if you're already, actually, this is a great challenge. If you're already in great shape and you're like, I don't need a 75 hard for fitness, do it for the Airbnb business. Can you see 75 properties in 75 days? Can you reach out to 75 people? Find a way to custom that challenge to yourself for this business. And you can literally be in a different world by the end of Q1. Maybe we need to put together a lit of an actual challenge and have people put money on the line where it's oh, like, that would be awesome. Yeah. Game over. Yeah. I know we've done that to each other in the past. We put, oh, put dude, money yeah. on the line for it. Yeah. Where it's like, if it's, if it's important to me, <clears throat> I'm going to follow through and I'll put, I'll put something on the line. I put my motorcycle yeah. on the line a couple of times. Yeah. Right. It was like, <laughs> I'm doing this. There's no way that was going right. Yeah, so. exactly. But yeah, guys, I, I mean, I am, I am, I'm really excited about 2021. I think I hope you guys are as well. Um, again, I think there's going to be, we're going to keep putting out a lot of content for you um, here on Clubhouse and we'll really be here with you. You know what I mean? For us and for me personally, especially, all this is, is just us helping other people get to where we are. And I don't do this for anything else. You know what I mean? Like I, I love this podcast and I love giving back to people just because this, this business has given me so much in my life on all perspective, right? On my spirituality, on my understanding of life, on my understanding of who I am, my identity as whole come from real estate and the freedom that has come from, from our business. 100%, man. 100%. So again, guys, just to recap, shift your identity, focus on your network, leverage meetups, even if it's on Zoom, throw the word, you know, Airbnb as your name, like Airbnb host, you know, Kyle or whatever, like find ways to get it out there, put yourself through some type of challenge. So set that goal of, you know, I'm going to reach out to hundred properties in the next three months or, or whatever that goal is for you, but set some actually hard and fast goals. Check out all the free resources that resources that we have. You can go to strsecrets.com, uh, go to strsecrets.com slash 2021 to get our reading list. Um, it's a lot, that reading list is broken down into a couple different categories. A lot of it is going to be around mindset because you got to get your mind right. And then some general like wealth building books, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and some of the books that have had a huge impact on us. And then a lot of them are also around like productivity and habits and things like that. So just set you up for success for this year. Um, and then definitely follow us on Clubhouse. You can follow me at Michael Shogren and E, I think you're at Epani Real Estate. Yeah, which is my th same thing as Instagram. And on Instagram, it's just epony dot real estate, but on on Clubhouse, it's gonna be the same thing. Epony real estate without yeah. uh, the dot. Awesome. Well, again, happy New Year, guys! Thank you guys for tuning in. Have an amazing week, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.